Hey guys, Cooper Carter here for Fractal Audio Systems, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to capture an impulse response, or IR, of your own guitar cabinet, and save that impulse response into the AxeFX 2 to use in your cabinet block. We're here at Down and Deep Studios in Atlanta, Georgia. The benefit to being in a recording studio is that we have a live room where we can turn up and mic our cabinet, and we have a control room where we can listen to the mic'd tone isolated from the sound of the cabinet itself. If you don't have access to a recording studio, you can still capture a great IR, as long as you have a quiet room where you can mic up your cabinet. The things you're gonna need for this method are a solid state neutral power amp. Today we're using a Matrix GT1000 FX, the AxeFX 2, a cabinet, a microphone, and a microphone pre. In this case, we're using a really nice API preamp, but if you don't have access to that kind of high-end gear, you can use almost any microphone pre, including the preamp on an inexpensive home mixer. We're going to use an IR capture preset in the AxeFX 2. To generate guitar tone to put through the power amp and into our speaker so that we can mic the speaker and get a good sound for our IR capture, for this preset to function correctly, we need to make sure that in the input-output audio screen of the AxeFX, output to echo is set to none. In this first scene, the amplifier and cabinet blocks are active, and the cabinet block is set to scratch pad 1. Once we've captured the IR, it will automatically load into the scratch pad so we can instantly use this scene to audition the IR itself. In this next scene, the amplifier and effects loop blocks are active. We'll use this scene to send tone through the power amplifier and the cabinet while auditioning mic positions and setting up the IR. Once we've captured the IR, switching between these two scenes will allow us to compare it to the original mic's cabinet tone. Now let's get set up. First, plug into your AxeFX 2 as you normally would, and then connect your preferred full range monitoring system to output 1. Now, connect the microphone to the microphone preamp. Play through the amp and set the preamp's input trim and gain optimally. Connect the output of the preamp to the input to left FX return of the AxeFX 2. Connect output to left FX send of the AxeFX 2 to the input of your power amp. Then connect the power amp speaker out to your speaker cabinet. If your speaker terminals are soldered, you'll need to desolder them to connect at least one terminal to your amplifier. Now, we need to make sure that in the global screen under config, capture method for IR is set to mic only and IR type is set to ultra res. Now we're gonna mic the speaker. This is the part of the process where it really helps to have a separate isolated control room and a live room for the cab. It also helps if you have someone else with you so that they can move the microphone to position it where you want on the cabinet while you're listening to the microphone tone in the control room. The tone you're gonna be getting from a mic speaker can vary drastically depending on where you have the microphone positioned on the speaker and even which speaker in, for example, a 4x12 cabinet you have the mic on. Very, very small adjustments can make a huge difference in your tone. You can get a lot of different IRs just from small movements of the microphone. We're gonna be using the Cab Lab 3 capture utility from Fractal Audio Systems to shoot the IR itself. Connect your computer to the AxeFX 2 via USB. Launch Cab Lab and start the IR capture utility. First, we're gonna test the levels of our system to make sure that we're getting an optimal signal to noise ratio for the IR capture. You're gonna hear a sine wave sweep through the speaker. If you're getting too much signal into the AxeFX, turn down output 2 on the front panel of your AxeFX. If required, you can further adjust input 2 levels on the input page of the input output menu of the AxeFX. Now using Cab Lab, let's hit capture and capture our IR. Once the IR has been captured, it will automatically load into the scratch pad 1 slot in our cabinet block for auditioning. Keep in mind though, the scratch pad is a temporary slot that will rewrite with each new IR. If you like a sound, make sure to then save the IR into a user cap slot or to file for future use. Now that we've captured our IR, let's check it for accuracy against our mic'd cabinet sound. As you can hear, the two tones are identical. Now that we've captured this first IR, you're all set up to continue capturing IRs. You can simply move the microphone a little bit on this cabinet to get a different tone, or you can even switch microphones and cabinets entirely and repeat the capture process. That's all there is to it. <laughs> 